everyone. You're watching We Heart Therapy, the special series EFT Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Annabelle Bugatti, licensed marriage and family therapist here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm also a certified EFT supervisor and therapist. And I am so excited. Okay, so if you guys have been watching my show, you probably recognize these two wonderful gentlemen here today. We have Levin Road. And of course, I don't, I say that like an American and not like a European because I'm not so cool on accents. And we have Jeff Sloopmockers. So Levin is the EFT trainer in Belgium and Jeff works with him. He's a co-facilitator. He's also an EFT certified supervisor and therapist. And Levin and Jeff specialize in working with violence in couples relationships. And they have published a book. They published some articles. They've done research. Their work is amazing. They, and they just have wonderful wisdom about psychotherapy in general. So I'm so excited to have them here. And before we get started and introduce the topic, I'm gonna ask Jeff and Levin to give a shout out to our international folks, cause I know they speak more languages than I do. So go for it guys. And we say, hello, bonjour, buongiorno, come state, hey, hey, we more do. <laughs> My Romanian is not coming now. Good morning. Good morning. If they listen in the morning, um, you guys know evening. Greek. Buona sera. They in Greek. What do they say in Greek again? Kalispero, Kalimero, something like no, that. I will just only deliver my first language and say who you are. You <laughs> Dutch. Which your first language is Dutch. <laughs> Dutch yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. And I've got French also. Bonjour, Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Welcome yeah. to the show. I can even speak English with a French accent if you want to. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! <laughs> I actually took French in high school, and so I can speak elevator French, but without the accent. So I tend to sound like a surfer from Texas when I try to speak French. <laughs> Because accents are horrible for me, so. And you know, welcome is a word that also goes in most Scandinavian language. Welcome. Yeah. Excellent. So, excellent. So many well, thank people you. Think. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. And hello to all of our international communities who are watching. And so today, so I don't know if you guys have heard the word. I know Jeff and Levin have. But I published an EFT book, and it is based on Sue Johnson's term, Relentless Empathy. You can buy it on Amazon, and if you have Amazon in your country, you can buy it in your country in the UK and Canada and such. The soft, buy the soft copy. Um, so this is the book. Jeff and Lee even have their copy. They're so gracious. So this is using relentless empathy in the therapeutic relationship, um, working with challenging and resistant clients. And really what I wanted the title to be was using relentless empathy to shape therapeutic relationships because that's essentially what we're doing. And so Jeff and Levin are gonna speak with me today about relentless empathy and challenging and difficult clients. And that's because Jeff and Levin specialize in violence and couples relationships. And I know, and you guys have probably seen this, this is probably one presenting problem in that therapists will come across that can really challenge their empathy. And so, you know, and, and my motto is always, you know, work, do your work around the most extreme cases and anything short of that will be a cakewalk. So if we can learn how to channel empathy for the hardest, most challenging clients, it'll be a lot easier to work with anyone short with that, shorter, short, shorter than that. Anyway, <laughs> so, Thank you guys again for being on. And so in your guys' perspective, so working with couples that have violence, I mean, obviously, you know, behavior is something we see therapists get hung up a lot in psychotherapy and they kind of miss the humanity behind, behind the behavior. Can you tell us a little bit more about your experience with that? Yeah, but would it be okay before we start and talking about this that I, I want to mention like, I just wrote down the word, okay. And I think before we go and talk about how can we help therapists get more empathic towards their clients and especially with the difficult situations, I would love to say and start off with, it's okay if we land up in a place and in a, 
in a moment in our work that we are unable. I think this is this is this is key, you know. As a mm -hmm. therapist, it's good to be to to find always a way to be empathic with our clients and the re relentless empathy. I love that. But maybe we should also acknowledge, as we always do, and that we are we can get stuck in a moment where it's just not possible. We just oh, yes. things, we get triggered as well. And I yeah. think to start off and then while we're where we'll start talking, we can talk about what helps us, what is the way to do it. And but let's just start with the idea it's okay if we get yeah. lost. And because that's yeah what happens. Well, that's a relentless oh. empathy for the person of the therapist. Yes. We all have our histories and our soft spots. And some people will be difficult for us. And, but we try our whole career to learn and to widen our capa capacities mm -hmm. for empathy. But we wouldn't be really truly relentless empathy if we don't have empathy for our own blocks. You know? so yes, we, we need that's to such be, a good point. It's, it's, that's such a good point you guys bring up. And so, yeah, I think that's perfect. Let's start slow because that is kind of the, the first part of my book as I talk about how empathy is not just a feeling, it can be a skill. Because as, as you so like aptly put it, Jeff, is that we are going to run into clients and it's okay, it's gonna happen, we're human, we're normal, that are just going to be harder to empathize with than others. And so we have to acknowledge that place and not get hung up on judging ourselves for having blocks that come up there. Just because empathy is, as you said, shapes a therapeutic relationship. So it's good therapeutic practice when we notice that we mm -hmm. cannot reach our own empathy for this person, that mm -hmm. we acknowledge it and we are kind to ourselves. And we go to a supervisor, we talk to somebody mm -hmm. and eventually we refer this client without saying you're a bad client, but saying I am blocked here, it's too difficult for me. I, I found a colleague who will gladly see you and, uh, and at this moment, so please accept that it's not about you, it's about me. And, you know, things are blocking me for the moment. So I could not be a good therapist for you. That. Yeah, really? yeah. and that's, that's if we can't work past the blocks, being able to recognize when it's in service of the relationship, that, you know, we're not going to be able to do our best service if we've, we're not able to work through those blocks and be with those yeah. clients. And we can work with our supervisor or someone else, but then mm -hmm. this client in this moment is not helped by that mm -hmm. because working through a block takes time yeah. and uh, the, it probably touches something in our mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Then so we need to yeah. find the cue yeah. and what is it disturbing mm -hmm. and what is my fear and what is blocking me. And, and oh, Jeff. That's yeah. our, our leave. And what you're saying right now is perfect because I also, and this is actually my very last chapter of the book, but it's also weaved throughout. And, and I weave this into my supervision is, you know, what you're saying, Levin, is really kind of applying. So we're emotionally focused therapy. Um, you guys are trainers, we're, we're supervisors. And so, you know, we, we have a clear roadmap and we have the tango. And so recognizing the cycle, right? Just as our clients get stuck in a cycle, we also get caught in a cycle. And one of my big self of the therapist piece that I do with my therapist is helping recognize your own dance with the client and the model, right? So if something happens with the client that triggers something inside of me, what happens to me? Um, this like early in my career, um, when I was the beginning therapist, when I would kind of fall out of empathy, I had to, I had to work with my supervisor to figure out what was happening. And it happened around angry clients when they would like turn and start attacking me. And I was like, wow. And I grew up with two big brothers, only girl in my family. So I learned to fight and not like physically with your fist, but just to, you know, really advocate for myself. But when you're in session with a client who's also in fight mode and you go into fight mode, that's not always going to be good for the therapeutic relationship. So Probably recognize not. what it does. Yeah. What does it do for me? What do I end up doing with me and the client? And then do I stay in the model? Do I pop out? You know, kind of what happens in that dance? 
right there is, is so wonderful to pay attention to. Yeah, to understand two ways that I think of, and maybe you think of a third way. So the first I mentioned your, your block, and then you go to an older, wiser person who can be younger, but you try to work it through and to explore yourself and look at yourself and hopefully we hope to get wider, but we have to be empathic there too, that it doesn't work all the time so easily. Mm -hmm. And another thing is when to be like, like transparent, like Rogers called it, eh? if we are in a block in the session, that one of the things I hear Jeff do, I try to do it too. So, wow, this is heavy what you tell us. You see, you try, you yeah. explain your own emotion. Can I hold here a little bit? I need to breathe because this is heavy what you're telling. And at the same time, you regulate yourself with your clients being transparent in what you do. Can I, can I guys over here and slow it a bit down if we used to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> or the, yeah. You know, look at the language. Uh, I think there's a part of it which is really essential. We're talking about passing through blocks, yeah, work things through. Yeah, I think this is this is some of the things we need to do as a therapist. You know, we have to. That's our professional developmental or do to say that we have to develop and that's the task we have to do, right? But look at <coughs> the words and there is pressure. We have to pass through blocks. We have to work it through. This is something that I really have to I find out on myself. I'm quite uh, yeah, hard for myself. Uh, I, there was a time where I thought I have to be empathic with every client. And all of a sudden I get triggered and I feel I'm not able. And then it goes to, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but maybe you have a block. Yeah, but then I need to go through my block. And I think in able to be empathic in really rough moments, I think being able to be empathic goes hand in hand with acceptance and being able to stay in the here and the now. Mm -hmm. That means also accepting that we have a block, mm -hmm. not trying to change it in the moment. And I think that's what you just mentioned with that example. Yeah. If people are feeling really, for example, very very mm -hmm. angry also towards us or towards their partner or, or they're doing things that are really triggering mm -hmm. and it's hard for us to lean in if we feel like we're getting blocked and we are not in the here and the now anymore we will be mm -hmm. our presence will go to that block and i really like mm -hmm. the transparency about that if we use it like mm -hmm. hey guys whoa to be honest i don't know what to feel right now mm -hmm. but I feel like this is this is something happening between you and me and between all of us and and I don't know it's really slowing it down mm -hmm. and be aware of those two parts like yeah maybe there's a block here I should mm -hmm. go to my supervisor or to my my friend but also like in the here and now just realize this is what's going on mm -hmm. we're yeah. not in we're not just related in an empathic way yeah 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 it's not possible to every second to be perfect at it it's and that's kind of what i talk about in my book is it's it, it's almost like a window of tolerance it's a window of empathy that you will fall in and out of and being aware of that and and knowing what to do when that happens and i love what you're saying is being present in the here and now both with yourself when those blocks come up and live in session and and you know even with empathy or when you're out of empathy we as a therapist are the most, like the most valuable tool that is going to be in that therapy room. And, you know, I love what you're saying is, is being transparent. I myself have adopted that strategy and EFT, it's, I feel really sets us up for success there because we talk about staying in present process and reflecting what's happening. So if that's like, okay, can we just kind of breathe real quick for a minute? Something just happened this is really heavy, I'm feeling it, or um, I kind of notice, you know, I'm feeling really attacked right now. And I noticed myself getting kind of um, activated, really feeling that, you know, let's see if we can kind of breathe here for a moment and stop together and see what's going on. <laughs> you know, just like, yeah. we're going to be here with the block. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, this, uh, 
So it's true, really true that EFT sets us up to handle it that way. Eh? Stay in the moment, stay in the emotion, see the emotion and within and in between eh? what's happening in me and in between us. And from a systemic background, I would also suspect that if I feel blocked and in a fight, you, my client, might also feel in a fight. I might resonate with something in you. So me being transparent might help you to realize that you, you feel something too. And then that's the way how we together get out of it, which again is EFT and attachment. We get out of it not by being strong alone, but by working together with other people in a vulnerable yes. way. So that's, uh, that's very nice. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And a lot of times it is, you know, in therapy, we call that word counter transference, right? Where something with the client is activating something in us. And um, maybe we over, we can overly identify in a negative way, and that could block empathy. Um, you know, what kind of, what have you guys experienced or what have you noticed in working with therapists and doing trainings? What are some of the most common kinds of blocks that you see or you encounter? Well, there are, there are many, you know, in a way there are many. So I just want to hang, hang a bit with what you just said, you know, when it comes to training and supervising and we, we train a lot together around the violence thing and we do also a lot of supervision and often in group together. And usually when we just try to lean in what's happening for you, there's always a part of people, when they start to describing what they feel, it's, they, we can always try to say, if you accept what you feel, mm -hmm. use those things to try to make a reflection. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that what's, that I found really helpful usually. Mm -hmm. If we also accept like, okay, this is what you feel, right? In a way, like, for example, like, mm -hmm. yeah, but this man, I get pissed off or I get really scared or- I feel attacked. I feel, I feel attacked. That probably that could be a word, you know, attacked. Then what happens is that therapist might, when he say that out loud, when he enact that in a way to the supervisor or to the trainer or to a colleague, he might say, all right, I'm coming out of shame, I feel attacked. He probably assume or say to himself, like, I should not feel attacked. Now I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a bad therapist. Mm -hmm. Usually what we do is to say like, all right, wow, you feel attacked. attacked. There must be some wisdom in there. There is mm -hmm. some wisdom in there. Right. So, yeah. well, I well, love I, that. Tell me about the wisdom, guys, because you said this during a training and I thought it was fantastic. Tell me about the wisdom of attachment and emotion, I believe is what you're talking about. Yeah, well, the wisdom, I the wisdom of attachment and emotion. I, okay. think, I think what happens is if we feel something, if we look at an, an emotion, yeah, the word, for example, the, super, the, the, the therapist we have in mind who says, I feel attacked. It's not totally only about himself and, and his block. It starts and it can only come up that feeling when he's triggered. Mm -hmm. So he gets triggered by something that happens in mm -hmm. the world with the couple or with the client or with the family. Mm -hmm. So it's, it could be a part of it is part of his own experience and probably his own history. That could be the case. But if we follow the logic about how attachment work and how emotions work, that feeling of being attacked is also happening in this relationship. And mm -hmm. I think there is a wisdom to start. And if we accept our own feeling, like, okay, I feel attacked, mm -hmm. we can start mm -hmm. to use that for trying to get a reflection. And that could sound like, hey guys, you know what, to be honest, whoa, can I slow you down? Because something is happening here. I don't know what it is, but in a way, what just happened between us here it gives me the feeling of being attacked. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that was not your intention or probably something that, that I'm sensitive to, but just mm -hmm. something happened here. And what comes up to me is I feel attacked. Can you feel that? Where are you guys? What just happened here? Can we help each other out? Like, mm -hmm. I think 
use that. And often what we see is that it's just, we can, we can continue. For people, it's often a relief because they say like, yes, sorry, that, what, that came out too hard to try and say, for example. And then the whole world opens there to explore how do you relate in relationships? How do you want to express your inner world and how do you do that? So in that part, the block is worked through in a relationship, which is very attachment oriented. It's not something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. no, let's have this idea. Whatever I feel, it has something to do with the process here too. It has something to do with me, but also with the process here. So the, the word that we use, but we got it from another theory, but we use resonance. So we are resonating. If mm -hmm. I feel attacked, then somebody here in the, in the couple probably also feel attacked. Mm -hmm. so I feel something that you feel that makes an empathic bridge. So then the block becomes a bridge. So it's turned around. Instead of mm -hmm. a block, it becomes a passageway to the other one. Mm -hmm. but, but that for that, we have to accept that we can feel irritated, angry with clients, blocked, <laughs> attacked, yeah. pissed, whatever, <laughs> sad, uh, ignored. And they say, all right. And then it's not something we cannot feel. It's a tool and a bridge mm -hmm. to get into the yes the two of you the four of you if it's yeah. a family yeah i love what you're saying so a couple of things that you're saying right here leaven are so so important and you know the first is you know if therapists don't work with attachment they may have a different perspective on emotions but um because we work in attachment and we know the attachment science we know that people don't just tend to make up feelings, right? That they don't come from nowhere, right? If they're feeling something, we know that that's information. Emotion is information about their reality and their present experiential truth. So we're assuming that feeling is true and we're just gonna lean in and get curious like, oh, if I'm feeling this, maybe you're feeling this, or we know if one of us is feeling this or all of us are feeling this, something's probably happening that this feeling is coming alive around. So let's see if we can understand that, if we can lean in, which is beautiful. And the second is about the resonating chamber, which is exactly in my book, I talk about how empathy is that we as a therapist are like an echo chamber where we resonate, we, we access emotional muscle memories. And sometimes those emotional muscle memories that we're accessing to empathize with the client, those are around really difficult emotions like anger or hurt or pain. And so, you know, yes, it could be a block, but when we can kind of be open and reflect it, it can also be a bridge back into connection with them, which is so important. And I'd love for you guys, I mean, I talk about it in my book, but I'd love for you guys to talk about it, why it's so important to be able to have that bridge back to clients, why it's even important to have, to be able to use empathy as a skill and why it's important to the therapeutic relationships, especially with clients that, you know, we may find it extremely difficult to have empathy for. All right. Wow, hey, Arlo, you can reflect on this. It's wonderful, just, <laughs> it is, it's... people will notice everywhere around the world, <laughs> your ability to reflect upon, I, I thought, wow, did we said that? That sounds really smart. But yeah, I, only because you said those I said, You did say it. <laughs> I said, so we can do it in session with the clients. Yeah. We, we can, if we accept ourselves, our emotions, we get a meta monitoring position to our emotions. And then we can work with it. We can, after the session, go to a supervisor and a friend. And I thought I would like to add another one a little further in time with our clients sometimes we lose it and we say bad things and we have the possibility of repair yeah mm -hmm. yeah we we can it's so so nice for our clients that we said last time i think i was a little bit nervous in the end i think i might have been harsh to you i'm sorry for that can we come mm -hmm. back to that because that kept me awake at night and i was thinking mm -hmm. how do you feel 
because I felt something touched me and I said something and I, then afterwards it could have sounded a little bit too hard afterwards. So, oh, mm -hmm. and so we do, we try to do repair with this, in this relationship, which is also good. We, we love the Etronic video, all of the still phase and we know that the repair is the most important thing. Eh? But this is also very helpful to when we realize we're getting stuck in a block knowing that there's always that option helps me a lot yeah but i just also was uh, thinking a little bit about your question because after your beautiful reflection we asked the question like can you tell us a little bit how we think and what could be a different opinion like why is it so important that we are so empathic with clients especially the ones that put our heart to be empathic with yeah, think, like why is this essential to the therapeutic yeah. relationship? Why is this essential? I think for me, Levin, and I'm really curious about your. I think I, I already think of an answer in two layers. In so two layers. Yes, okay. we'll I, will, I, will <laughs> I love it. With the one, and I think because development, human development, has anything to do with co regulation. Yeah. And the clients that are that are acting out, I don't know if that's a good word, but that presents mm -hmm. itself in a way that a behavior that is hard to understand, that triggers us, that gave us all those moral ideas like unethical and wrong and stuff like that. I think we choose as an EFT therapist also be very acceptive when we're not able to, but if we're able to, we choose to lean in and try to understand it from an attachment point of view. And what I see when people are just acting out or doing, yeah, presenting themselves in a really hard way that's hard to understand, I choose to see that as they're just suffering. Mm -hmm. they, this is the best way they have here and on to express what they are feeling and what they need. But so, the weirder it gets, the harder it gets, the more people are suffering. And so that's the more pain they have. Yeah, the, the, yes. they're in pain. And that's a choice. And then what they need is that we help them co-regulate what is going on. So what we mm -hmm. want is that they can express their feelings and their attachment longings and their needs in a clear, coherent way to the one that mm -hmm. they love. But mm -hmm. as with my own children, they are just not able yet. Mm -hmm. So I need to have empathy mm -hmm. and I need to feel what they feel so I mm -hmm. can help them name what they feel. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have empathy, right, they will feel it, right? They will feel that sense of judgment, even if we don't use judgmental words. I mean, and this, this is important, I think, to say right here as well is, you know, I think the precursor to this concept was Carl Rogers' term, unconditional positive regard, which to me is kind of just more of a cognitive way of saying, I'm just going to think positively or give you the benefit of the doubt, um, you know, unconditionally, which to me, relentless is hedges along unconditional, right? It means that we have empathy and we don't we don't stop working on having empathy. Doesn't mean we're always gonna be able to have empathy, but when we figure out that we've fallen out of it, we need to work to get back into it because the client will feel it. They'll feel when we can't empathize with them and their guards will go up. And especially, you know, I, I love what you're saying, Jeff, and, and I say this in the book too, is the behavior is the tell. You know, if, if we're like in, in Vegas, like the poker, you know, um, behavior is like the show of what's on their cards, right? That there's pain underneath. Yeah, it may not be effective the way that they're sharing their pain, or they're not able to regulate it or co-regulate it or, or express it in a healthy way. And empathizing with somebody is not validating their unhealthy behavior. It's being able to access the human in pain underneath so that we can connect with them because the more they feel connected to in their humanity, the less guarded they'll be 
as we try to open them up and help them do something more healthy and adaptive in their relationship. Great. So my, my job my job is only to summarize the summary. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I have three layers. I have now I have three layers. The we basic, have three layers, yes. The basic layer is what Annabelle is saying. The therapeutic relationship is the basis of every therapeutic endeavor. And so showing empathy builds that relationship. So if we have that relationship, we can work on that. I was thinking in the Brené Brown little clip on empathy, there's four elements, but I think it's about emotions, showing empathy and humanity. I'm with you, I'm with you, you know, going down in the situation, I'm with you in your pain. I know that pain in myself and I show it to you so you're not alone. That's how we, empathy is like, I love it in your book. You say it's not a gift from nature only. It's something we can exercise. It's a muscle we can exercise. We can exercise these elements. That was the first. It's always the basis. And then with you, Jeff, I would say the same, that the more, if we feel I have difficulty with this person to reach my empathy directly, this is an assessment tool to say probably this person did not get a lot of empathy in life so that's what you said also Annabelle the, the, the way to reach out is transformed is a little bit skewed it's from behind the wall yeah and and the third thing you said uh, also Jeff this, uh, but I want to make it a third thing if we can that's a, a, a music group, of course, Arrested Development. It's a, a yes. music group also. So, oh, it's a TV show too. A TV show. So I don't know the TV show, I know the, the pop music. But the, so if we people have uh, did not receive too much empathy in their life, their development is arrested in a way. And if we can find ways to give relentless empathy, that will lead to what Rogers called growth of what we called grow, growth also in EFT, because the development could restart. Yeah. So yes. that's where the, I just summarized what you beautiful people said, but I just organized it in three layers. To yes. Look smart, to look smart. Yeah. It's so beautiful. You are smart. You are smart. And it is uh -huh. beautiful. And, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's so true. You know, and especially when when it's these clients that are super hard, it can be so easy to and and look real quick, you're you just be if you're watching this video, just think about it for a second. You know the difference when somebody has empathy with you or when they're just kind of like understanding you from a distance, right? Like oh yeah that kind of sucks i feel so bad for you like empathy or sympathy it feels more like can feel kind of placating or appeasing even though you know it comes from a caring place um even cognitively understanding somebody like you know when somebody intellectually gets it versus emotionally when they're connected to you on that level and that's why empathy is so important because we know that emotions are the key to changing behavior and people need to emotionally experience connection with us on that deepest level. And so relentless empathy is that understanding on the deepest level it exists that the client can feel it. And you know it, you felt it in your body. Like when you're, maybe you're turning to a loved one, a partner or a spouse, and you're like, oh, this terrible thing happened to me today. You know the difference when they're like, oh, yeah, that sucks. I, I imagine that could be terrible versus like, oh, my God, yeah, I can only imagine like, you know, maybe I wasn't in that situation, but I remember once feeling publicly humiliated and, and that was awful. Oh, man, I totally I can imagine, you know, like, you know, when they get it, you know, and you know, when they don't. And suddenly I remembered, but you remembered me, the fourth element in the Brene Brown mm -hmm. video is you go inside as a therapist and you find a feeling that somehow resonate resembles with like you said i can feel you go to your own place of humiliation to to yeah. to to, uh, to yeah. if, you, if you want to reach a person that feels humiliated you say yeah, yeah i know that feeling while you feel it and you say i know that feeling maybe not like you not the same amount but i i and it was already terrible when i felt it 
So yes. then you feel it in the moment you say it, it changes our body. That, as you said, Annabelle, reaches the other person. Then the other person feels, you feel something that resembles what I feel. You don't, don't not only know, but your yes. body is feeling it. Yeah. And then, yeah. then they feel they are not alone, they're experiencing yes. And that's, that's key, but there is also a next part. And we need to have, we need to be able to do this, you know, the relentless empathy to feel with people. That's also the Brene Brown line, I think. It's about feeling with people. But what we do, and that's that makes a difference for us as EFT therapists, we lean in, we go in an experience with everything we've, we've got, with as much as we're capable in that moment, and we lean in, and we try to feel with them, but that's not the end of it because doing that, we're able to say, guys, mm -hmm. I just felt what we are talking about. I could feel it in my gut and I want to tell you something. It just makes sense, right? And that's, th that's something really different. We can, from a more cognitive level, we can reflect, we can evoke a few things, we can validate, but if we don't lean in with relentless empathy, we will never mm -hmm. have that power where we say to people, guys, it makes sense. We can, we can just add that. And so in a way, mm -hmm. why is the relentless empathy so important is that without, we will never get those strong effects that we have in our basic interventions, mm -hmm. that reflection evoke it the emotions and validated mm -hmm. as a whole mm -hmm. logic mm -hmm. concept so a coherence so people can feel like yeah i have it i do have a felt sense and i'm mm -hmm. not alone and people are can are able to feel it with me so that means yes. that i'm worth something and then they grow yeah they're more That's likely to have. yeah they're more likely to let us get close to these parts and, and we all want behavioral change that kind of goes without saying it's it's the path that we use to get there and you know I love what Levin said and, and that's what I called in my book is empathy is an emotional muscle memory so I may not have been in the same situation but I'm channeling any part of me that remembers what it's like to feel something similar and again this can be really hard when you have a client you know and, and so you guys work with some of the most challenging clients out there. And I see this come up a lot for therapists when they work with couples that have violence. It's like, oh, but this person's, you know, uh, abusing their partner and, and we, we got to stop this, you know, they're, they're, they need to go to anger management or, or they're a narcissist or they're this, you know, or, or they just smack their wife. And it's like the person, yes, yes, we, we are not ignoring the behavior, but we're also not rushing into like oh you're a bully oh you're this oh you're that because the, the client will feel it and these clients that have this kind of behavior remember it's the tell are the ones who need the most empathy right they're in a lot of pain and it can be so hard and when i have clients that come in i've learned to do this where if i notice myself struggling for empathy I recognize that block and I say, okay, I'm going to let this client grow me because clearly here's a growth edge for me where I need to work on my ability to have empathy. So I'm going to let this client teach me something new about how to have empathy. And again, we're not validating hurtful behavior, but we are trying to connect with their humanity so that we can help with the behavior. And I found even people that do some of the most reactive or hurtful things, I found that most of them, and, and this is a word that I've heard some of my, my own clients use, so I'm just gonna borrow their words, is they come off as monstrous to other people. But what I find on the inside is that's not really who they are, that's not really who they want to become. Even though when they're caught up in their pain, they may do things that give the exact opposite impression where I don't want to be a monster. I don't want you to see me a monster, even though when I get angry, I lashed out in a way that seemed monstrous, right? When you can lean in and, and access the human underneath and see that they're not a monster and they feel like you really see them and who they want to be, it's so much easier for them to say, okay, now help me do something different so that 
I don't betray myself here. So that the person I want to be is the person who comes out when I'm angry. That's powerful. While you're talking, I was, my mind went back to, we had a training today with a really smart group, a very experienced therapist, a specialized center. And this man, they're all well-trained in EFT. And this man said like, you know what, this is challenging, Jeff and Levin, what you guys are telling us, because in a way, what you ask us to do here is to lean in and with relentless empathy and just lean in that situation where it gets really rough, the really violent couples, and they say like, yeah, but what am I doing then? I've got this ethical problem here because now I am validating some behavior that doesn't feel right. And I said, whoa, slow down, slow down. What do you mean with validating? Yeah. Validation is never about giving a validation to, to one part of an emotion. What we do in EFT is we don't, if we, if we, we talk about the validation, we talk about, we can validate the process, the process, right? Where, where action tendency or behavior is just a part, you know, now we're all into assembling of emotions. We see all those parts, right? So what, what we are validating is, whoa, you, you will behave like a monster, right? You will become a lion, right? When he comes at you for hours or she comes at you for hours and she says, over and over and over again, she says those horrible things that really are re-traumatizing and your youth and how you're being really abused, it all comes back alive. You know, and you feel so under attack by the one that you really love. So there is no safe place anywhere because the only one you ever trusted is now just attacking you. And I know saying to the other partner, and I know it's because you are fighting for that connection. You want to be with him. You want to feel that he's capable of feeling emotions because you need him. I know, I know. But when she comes at you fighting for connection in such a strong way and you get totally re-traumatized and all those images of how you get smashed as a kid comes back alive. Yeah, sure, you will do as, as a lion does when he's cornered, he will attack, right? And that doesn't look great. That has serious consequences that I want. But if you let me see how all those old images just rising up again and start floating like out of control that you fight, that makes sense. That really makes sense. I think there is everybody in the whole world would do that when we're under attack like this. And this is so hard for the two of them. So yeah, yeah. This is validating mm -hmm. the process with a mm -hmm. lot of empathy, but mm -hmm. we never validate behavior the anymore. Behavior. That's right. In fact, you did, you, you were very direct about it. And guys, I don't know who put this bad rumor out there that EFT doesn't confront. We absolutely do, but we do it in the empathic way, the EFT way. And, you know, I love how you offered that is that, yeah, it has serious consequences. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look right. It has serious consequences, right? So we're not diminishing you know, the impact of the behavior um, and the consequences. But, you know, without like going to that person and saying you're a manipulative abuser and you need to stop or go to this support group or go to that. It's like you reached into his heart and saw his heart and the attachment intentions enveloped in that process of emotion is like seeing a drowning man who's drowning, right? Or drowning person, you know? Like, let me reach out and, and help you. And then we can find a way together what we can do the next time we're drowning so that we don't destroy everything around us, you know, because that's not what we want to do. No, and probably after this validation, if we, we say, and, and do I get it right? You call it a monster. Does that mean you don't like that yourself when that happens? Then after the validation, people will say, of course not. I hate it when I behave like that. You know, <laughs> it's not for yeah. us to judge because the people judge, the, the most people judge themselves already if we That's validate right. them first. If we right. validate them first. 
And we don't need to say the behavior is toxic or unhealthy or bad or this or that, the other, the distress in the relationship does it for us. And yeah. this is how you can avoid judgment is because you already know the fact that they're in therapy. You know that maybe CPS, your child protection is involved or the police or whatever. You already know by the consequences, the relationship distress that this isn't working, right? So you, you let the distress do the talking for you and that can help you stay out of judgment, which will help the client feel more like you're connected to them, like they can trust you and they're more likely to let their guard down so you can do the work that needs to be done. Yeah, fantastic. I, 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 I immediately see the resemblance with all kinds of even softer problems that people bring to us, like OCD, which is, uh, we don't understand it necessarily. What are you doing? Uh, climbing up the stairs backwards all the time or the, or the checking the door 25 times. Uh, but we know that you suffer from it and you're with us in therapy because you feel you have to do it. And at the same time, another part of you feels this is destroying my life and my relationships. And this, I'm paying a price for this behavior. And please help me with it. I'm drowning, like you said, I'm drowning. Yeah. And I want to add something that you mentioned so beautifully, Annabelle. You made it about a relationship. I really love that. Yeah. I also love what you said, of course, my friend. I hope so. I hope so, Jeff. I hope so. But you made it about the relationship and it made me wonder like hey but this is it felt like yeah but this is also a resource for me when i'm working with these folks that are really sometimes hard and very aggressive and doing things like as a person as a person i, I don't like it you know but as i want to lean in to help them but sometimes it's so helpful to see them sitting there as a couple because that reminds me those people they love each other Mm -hmm. they, they get stuck, it escalates, but in the end, they ask me, Jeff, our therapist, or Lee, can you help us to regain safety, to, to restore our mm -hmm. connection, to feel safely connected with each other? Mm -hmm. And so that means that what they tell us by the, in, by, just by coming as a couple, they tell us mm -hmm. there is something unique and special and it's hard to see underneath all our problems and all the escalations, but there is something why I choose to be with you. And it seems that has happened the other way around because. Mm -hmm. And so there is something that those people really saw with each other that brought them together and gave them hope. Mm -hmm. Because all those couples are really traumatized couples. So there must be something beautiful, mm -hmm. safe, warm in these people. And so when I don't see it individually, just mirroring back or just taking a step back and seeing that, but this is a couple, this is about love, this is about connection. There is some good in it. Trust yeah. me, Jeff, it will, it will come up, it will, they, it will be able to flourish again if we just keep on creating that safe haven where they feel welcome, accepted, and just keep on trying to be as empathic as possible it will come. right and i love what you noticed that you know i made it about relationship because that's exactly what it is is it's a therapeutic relationship and like it or not we can't always pick our clients we can't always pick their presenting problems but our job is to help as a therapist we're supposed to help with people's pain we're supposed to help them be more effective at relationships in life and if they feel our judgment, if we get caught in judgment and we cannot have empathy, then the doors will be closed. And even, you know, I was, I was telling um, Jeff and even this earlier that in Bowlby's book, The Making and Breaking of Affectional Bonds, which is a great, phenomenal book, but Bowlby writes how if the therapist is unwilling to enter into a genuine and authentic relationship with their client, then progress cannot be made. And it's so true. And empathy is the doorway to that. And, you know, um, I, I think it's important for 
yes, we understand. I love what you mentioned. Yes, I've got ethical issues here. You know, sometimes therapists get hung up in that. They get too hung up on, you know, the behavior. And it's not that, again, we're not dismissing it. We're not ignoring that it's there. Of course, you know, there's protocols for safety and such. But, um, you know, this is why I emphasize in my book, I do a whole section on attachment because in EFT and, and as attachment therapists, we understand it's, it's kind of like looking at a tree and the behavior would be the equivocal of looking at the leaves. And when you understand roots and what makes roots grow, when you look at a, the leaves of a tree, you'll know exactly what's at the roots. So when clients come to my office, I'm seeing leaves all the time. And when I, I was like, oh, I know what's at the root just by looking at the leaves. And we know that there's a human in there and, and attachment really gives us the key to understanding humans and humanity and why they do what they do, which is always emotionally driven. Even the act of trying not to have emotions is still emotionally driven. You know, it's that golden trifecta that I, that I always tell my supervisees about is attachment again is, is the lens through which we see the world. We make sense of all human experiences and it's directly attached to emotion and behavior is the tell of the combination of those two things. It is the tangible expression of those. So it's essential to understand attachment so that you can understand the keys and essence of humanity. And then it's so much easier to understand people when they come into your office, especially when they do come with things that it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not okay with that, right? As you said, some, some things it's like, whoa, as a person, whoa. But we're not there because it's about us as a person. We're there because it's about them. And empathy is a relationship building skill. And it is in service of the relationship always so that we can connect to their humanity and create change. Okay, yeah, Annabelle, beautiful. Can, can, can I try to say the same thing in my own words? Yes. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, so it will be briefer. <laughs> like, there's not enough saliva anymore it's late at night as it is here the you said clients come to therapy to us because they are in pain that's uh, like a premise eh? I, I do selection of trainees of psychotherapy and i select them all and if i feel they have a, a red light flashing on their head then I say, you can come. So that means they are people who, when they see pain, they want to help. That's clear. So from that point, all therapists are willing to lean in to the pain. Sometimes the behavior obscures the pain mm -hmm. and that blocks then the therapist. So on an attachment level, I would say it's the willing is about choosing to be a therapist because you know, you are people that say, you're crazy leaving and Jeff to talk to people in pain all the time. Why are you willing to do that? Because we love to help, you know, this because <laughs> if we abandon them, then they'll be left alone in the dark. It's like, you know, it's, it's not the light room that needs the candle, it's the dark one. <laughs> and yeah, if we yeah. abandon, everyone in darkness, they'll never have the light. But I mean, I know people who prefer to be engineers. I don't mm -hmm. want to say anything about engineers or, but they, you know, because that's another zeal in life. We, right. we have something, new. when there's pain, we want to help. Mm -hmm. And so we choose to be therapists. That is the willing for me. In yeah. the session where we get blocked, there's no willing involved. Mm -hmm. It means in an attachment language, just like a couple, we don't see the primary emotions anymore. We see the behavior that blocks us. We see our fear and that blocks us. So, but if we can, like you said, all clients come to us with pain. If we can see the pain again, we're saved. So mm -hmm. we, have, we have to reach, where does it hurt, my friend? I lost it. Well, yes, it hurts. And when I can see your pain, automatically my empathy comes back. Yeah. Yes. Even yeah. turn around to be brilliant. Um, brilliant. Brilliant. And to me, attachment 
understanding attachment gives us x-ray vision, right? I think that's why EFT therapists are so gifted at this, right? Is because we've learned that the behavior is not the whole story, right? Yeah. And we have x-ray vision to see, ah, there's pain underneath. And when I can see your pain, my empathy comes back. Brilliantly. Uh, uh, yeah, as, as usual, of course, but I also have a, a very essential hope. You know, my hope is that we as therapists, that we do this for our colleagues as well, you know, that mm -hmm. we treat our colleagues in the same way that we are now talking about how we want and think how we should treat our clients. You know, we should mm -hmm. really look at the same way to our colleagues and towards yes. ourselves. I mean, it's all working at our leading edge, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. we get at places that is just behind what we can mm -hmm. tolerate. Yes. And that's okay. And then we are suffering, you know, then our mm -hmm. the ones who, who try to help everybody is suffering themselves. Mm -hmm. so they really mm -hmm. need others to be empathic with the yes. impossibility they experience in order to help. And it would be so great if we could do that as as a group, you know, for each other. Amen. For each other. <laughs> Amen. And that's actually the last chapter of my book. I hope you guys read it. It's all about applying everything we just talked about and more in the book to ourselves. Because even as therapists, and, and this is what inspired that last chapter, is it's so easy to help our clients respond differently and how to handle their cycles. But when we're the one in the cycle, maybe it's a colleague, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's our own spouse, right? It's like, are we also leaving our tools and techniques at our own therapy office and we come home and we're a different person and we forget like, hey, we're also a human in distress. What happens to us when our own partner, our own family member, our own child, our own colleague comes to us and, and the cycle, we're step, stepping in the cycle now. Can we remember those aspects and and see the suffering see our own suffering and find that doorway of empathy so that we can also walk with each other and instead of canceling relationships right that's kind of like the popular idea now from canceling to connecting right and if anything we we don't have the luxury of canceling all relationships right some of these are people you you want to be in relationship with or you have to be in relationship with me because you work with them so if anything finding some doorway to empathy will at least make those relationships you have to be in much more tolerable but if it's a relationship you want to be in it can help you connect and and reshape that relationship and and those interactions so We've got to wrap there. I so appreciate you guys. You guys are brilliant. You guys, um, if, if you have not had the chance to attend one of their trainings, they are amazing. Uh, you can go to icep.com where you will find some of their trainings listed, but let everyone know um, across the globe, how can they find you guys? Where, they, where can they look up your research articles, your book? Uh, the place to be is EFT Belgium, then you will find connection to anything. And uh, articles are in Family Process in the Journal of Relationship and Couple ther Therapy. So, but you can email because I think if you email, we're allowed to send it to you. Yeah. yeah. And if you guys have a link to where it lives online, um, I will put that in the description for this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to it on a podcast, go to YouTube and you can look it up. And you guys have websites? We bought one, but we still didn't <laughs> reach it yet. <laughs> no, no, no. We, just, we, we really prefer, instead of building a website, we think like, shall we build a website or shall we look some tapes we did last, last week and then we always go for the tapes and try to listen to the wisdom people are trying to say. True. Uh, Very uh, we're, we're not good in it anyway. So. No, no, you can, but well, you have things to find. For instance, Annabelle Bogatti's show, you can listen to us talking about violent couples. Yeah, <laughs> true. And there, maybe there are some other things out there that we don't know of. So it, it, it's, well, and you guys are on Facebook and social media. So if folks yeah. you know, want to find you, if they want to email you, ask questions, attend your trainings. And I think there is a website for EFT in Belgium, correct? Yes, there, there is there is one, and I don't know when this 
show will be long on, so it's it's not a point to say the upcoming trainings because by the time people look at the show, they might be passed. Yeah, so, well, and there will be another one coming up, but they, they can also coming. message you guys and ask you guys to do the training in their area. We just had them do it here in the United States, so you know they they like to travel. So don't be bashful. Don't be afraid to email or contact Jeff and Levin and ask them your questions and. Please attend their training and uh, I will put information on their book in their article in the description for this video. And thank you guys again so, so much for being with us today and just dispensing your wisdom. Thank you, Annabelle, for having us on your show for the second time we get acquainted. And so it's, it's uh, nice to be here. Loved it. Thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. And thank you so much to our viewers. Make sure that you hit subscribe because more videos are on the way. Don't forget to buy my book, Using Relentless Empathy in the Therapeutic Relationship, Connecting with Challenging and Resistant Clients for Helping Professionals, available on Amazon or on my website, www.drbugatti.com.